Hey everyone, it is officially here. The first day of Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival. I am so excited. First of all, my friend Danielle is here with me, so she's gonna try some of the food items that have meat in them. She also got Remy's Hide and Squeak for her daughter, featuring this really, really cool figment bowl that would be your prize for completing the hide and squeak, but just between you, me, and the lamppost, you can just get the bowl when you pay for the hide and squeak anyway. But I am so excited to try some of these food items, maybe ride some rides while at Epcot as well. It's gonna be a fun day.
And finally, we had to kill some time by riding Frozen because the food booths don't open until 11, but now it is 11, time to get started. The first thing I'm going to do are the potato and pea samosas, I believe is how you pronounce it, from the India booth. I know I have had these in past years and really, really liked them. I guess I probably should have broken it up before I started recording because it's hard to do that on the table with one hand, but here we go, all right. We got it, we got it. <laughs> the dough is definitely tough today. I'll be a pro at this by the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, the spicy sauce really works well with the potatoes and the peas on the inside. So you have those dull flavors on the inside, but then they're really brought out by the tanginess of the sauce on top. I really like these. I liked them the last time, like I said. And I think they're a good way to start the day. Get some carbs, sort of carb load a little bit here, and then make our way around World Showcase. You love to see at the German railroad in the town square of the little German village, they have banners for Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival. Every festival they do this, they switch out those little banners in this German village that goes along with the train set. And it's a tiny detail that you could very easily miss, but one of those things that makes Disney great. I hope they continue to do this. Every new festival, when I see that they're still doing this, I get really excited. Right here is a prime example of why I always tell you don't do the Italy booth during any Epcot festival. Look at the prices here, including the vanilla cheesecake, which looks really good. Okay, vanilla cheesecake. The apple strudel at the Germany Pavilion was under $6. The vanilla cheesecake here is almost $8. For some reason, the Italy booth is never all that creative 
and it's super duper expensive. So just skip it, do other things. So Danielle just went to Flavors of America and she got the New York style all beef hot dog with sauerkraut, onion tomato sauce, and spicy mustard in a brioche bun. Let's see how this tastes, Danielle. Oh man, that's taking me back to ballpark days. It's really good, really flavorful though. I feel like the tomato sauce has a bit of a kick to it. Yep, definitely a kick. And are they actually using like a good hot dog? Because there's a difference between a good hot dog and a bad hot dog. No, that's an all beef like good hot dog. Really good flavor, really juicy. Doesn't have like that weird fake taste to it. It literally tastes like I just went to the ballpark. And you said it was what, six seventy five? Six seventy five. Actually, I think this is a really good deal. They also had some like pale ales. You could get a beer flight for I want to say twelve ninety five, which isn't bad at all. This is overall the American Pavilion is a good deal. And actually, speaking of ballparks, they have a uh, farm fresh ale from Cooperstown, New York, home of the Baseball Hall of Fame. That's right. I should have topped that off with that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and at Flavors of America, you can get this New York style hot dog, also the Chicago style, Carolina style, or Southwest style. I thought this was such a good idea this year for this booth. I agree. So Danielle found us a seat inside the Morocco Pavilion, but I am trying the items from the Greece booth. I have the Impossible Moussaka, which is 100% plant-based, it is vegan, and the griddled cheese with pistachio and honey. It is part of the, all right, let me get this right here, Emile's fromage montage menu. So if you get five of these cheese items, you will get something free or Disney free. You know, Disney free means you buy five other things and they give you something uh, at the end of getting those five stamps. So I will make sure over the course of this festival to at least get five of the cheese items. Let's try the griddled cheese first. This is one of my favorites from past years. And when they do it well, it is really, really good. Mm. The griddle gets that nice, like, just slightly burned taste. And of course it burns a little bit of the honey in there. The honey adds some sweetness to the savoriness of the cheese. Just basically a perfect dish. It's so good. And now for the vegans, we are gonna do the impossible moussaka. I've had this in past years. It hasn't been one of my favorites. But let's see. All right, let's give it a shot. Some of the seasoning, just a little bit sweet. Then you get that impossible flavor. The impossible is really, really good. Obviously get some potatoes. Uh, there's some onions in there, and it's a good combination of flavors. I think most people will really enjoy it. It's not necessarily my favorite flavor combination, but if you just like to have a little bit of a comfort food, I think this is something you'll really, really like. But definitely the griddled cheese, in my opinion, is the highlight of the grease food. 
So Danielle just stopped by the Belgium booth between the Moroccan and French pavilions. First she's gonna try the beer braised beef served with smoked gouda and mashed potatoes. It really looks like a comfort food kind of thing. So let's see. Beef and I got the mashed potato. It's just like a stew. It's got pieces of carrots in it. Oh, it's so good. This is like something you'd eat on a cold day. Yeah, we were talking about how both Danielle and I are originally from Pennsylvania, so a lot of this is sort of bordering on Pennsylvania Dutch food. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's probably a part of it. You also got something a little boozy here, right? You got the, let's see here, the Belgian chilled coffee with Choco Lot Deluxe Salted Caramel Chocolate Liqueur. That is a mouthful. So why don't you give that a taste too? Definitely, definitely tasty. I don't know what it is, but it's a good, like, sweet and salty taste. It's like $12. Do I think it's worth $12? Probably not, because you can get a flight for $14. Um, this here was $6.75, so I think that was a good deal. This is good. I wouldn't say I'd spend another $12 on it, but... But it'll help cool you down a little bit. It's a very, very hot day, and then when you're having beer braised beef with that... <laughs> I would say I would buy this again. This is 100% a go-to. So we got evac off of Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and now we come outside and it is one of those Florida rainstorms where it's still bright, but the rain is coming down heavy. So hopefully this will be through in just a few seconds here, and then we can make our way over to, I think we're gonna do the Canada booth next. I think that's where we're gonna have to hit it up soon. Danielle stopped at Simmering Sips and she got the flight which is tropical berry and blood orange mimosas. So why don't you try the tropical first here? Okay. Ooh, that's really good. This almost tastes like if you ever go to Boma in the morning when they have that nice little refreshing drink, just the touch of champagne is what it tastes like. It's really good. People really love those drinks at, at Boma. So yeah, so that's... Good. All right, this one I'm a little iffy about, so we'll see. Oh, super sweet. Um, it's okay. Not my fave. Maybe six out of ten. But it's very, very, very sweet. If you like sweet, you'll love it. This one is the one I'm dying to try. That's the one that definitely looks the most appealing, that blood yeah. orange. So. Perfect. Uh, it's not too sweet. A little bit of a kick with a little bit of a tart. It's really good. Um, overall, this was like 14 bucks for three different ones. If you get one by itself, it's seven dollars. So I would say you probably probably get more bang for your buck doing it this way. The way you can taste all of them.
We are in the brand new Communicore building for the Macatizers booth. And I went kind of crazy at this booth. I was so excited for this one. And I got three of the four items, all of the three items that don't have meat in them. And this is gonna be it for me for food, at least for a little while. I think after this, we're gonna try and ride some rides for a little bit. So I just want to quickly go over all three of these options first. The traditional mac and cheese. This is just a regular old mac and cheese with some breading on it. Let's go. It's good. I would say you could maybe use a tiny bit more cheese. But actually, the more that I get that aftertaste, it's seasoned really well, and you definitely get a little bit of crunch from that breading. So I think overall, really good. This is the one I was excited, most excited to try. And that is the truffle mac and cheese. It also has breading and of course these nice truffle mushrooms. This appears to be more of a white cheddar. Mm. Yeah, it's just great that truffle mushroom gives it like a little bit of a meaty flavor. If you're missing meat as a vegetarian or you just like mushrooms, that is a really, really good one. And finally, I am going to try the vegan. This is chili cheese mac and cheese. I forgot to ask for none of the imitation sour cream, but that's okay. I'll eat around it. And it does have like Fritos on it too. So I'm trying to get a forkful here that has the chili and the cheese and the noodles. Let's dig in here. Mm. So I think that my co-host Maz makes a good point where she says, if you're gonna do a vegan cheese dish, maybe you shouldn't have it be the one with chili because not everybody wants that spicy thing and some people might like a good imitation fake cheese if they're lactose intolerant or something like that. But I will say it is still a pretty good option for those of you who don't eat meat. So worth it with a soda. These three items came to $23.50, so it's not a cheap boot. Um, and you're gonna wanna try multiple items, but definitely quality stuff. I am Nova Prime Irani Rayal, Commander of the Nova Corps. On behalf of all Zandarians, I hope you have enjoyed exploring the wonders of Zandar. As you have seen, your world and ours were born of the same moment, one which you refer to as the Big Bang. As such, we are all galactic neighbors in a vast universe which we and countless others share. So I've been getting a lot of comments on my shirt, so thank you everybody 
who saw it and said, go Dodgers to me. Um, just rode Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. We got Gloria Estefan and Kanga. And now I tell you what, I've had a decent amount of the food offerings here for food and wine. I have ridden a few rides. It's very, very hot today. And Danielle had to leave to go pick her daughter up at school. So I might try like one more food item and maybe see if I can do living with the land and then I might head out of here for the day. I think that sounds like a pretty good way to celebrate the first day of Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival. About the shirt, by the way, uh, my mother got it for me and today is her birthday. So her birthday is the first day of the Food and Wine Festival. So there you go. Anyway, I think there's one more item that I wanna try and then I'm gonna try living with the land, like I said, and then I think it is gonna be time to call it a day. From the flavors from Fire Booth, I just had the Impossible Montreal style burger slider with cheddar and tomato jam on a sesame seed bun. This was a vegan option and it was very, very good. The jam actually really went well with the Impossible, you know, meat. So I was pleasantly surprised at that combination of flavors. Sorry, a monorail is going over my head right now. I would definitely recommend getting that item even if you are a meat eater because it's one of those leaner. I know there are a couple like bison options here at the festival, so when you think about lean meat like bison or if you just think of something leaner like Impossible Burger, sometimes on a hotter day like today, that can be really good. And then the jam was just a little bit of the sweetness to go along with the burger. So I liked it. I thought it went very, very well. But I did spill some of the jam on my pants. And since I was thinking about heading home anyway, I think that was my cue that I've spent a little too much time here at Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival for the first day, but I will be back plenty. I will be ready to show you more of these offerings, and we have months of this festival left to still try.
my apologies to living with the land. I just hit a wall and it's very hot. And I was up very late last night. I actually went to a concert in Tampa. I saw Stone Temple Pilots live and Soul Asylum, some really great 90s alternative bands. But I was up late and then when I get home after a concert, I can't go right to bed. I'm all stoked and posting stuff on social media. So I didn't get to bed until like four o'clock in the morning and then I woke up at a quarter of seven so that I could get a Guardians boarding group and then be here close to the opening of Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival. So I'm gonna call it a day there. Do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. But I will be back at this festival a ton. I'm gonna show you all of the food options so you will not wanna miss it. Make sure you are subscribed. Have a great day, I'll talk to you soon.